It should be okay. I'll ju just um, well, good. Right, can you hear me, Goff? Yeah. Well, why why is it you can hear me and and Henri can't? I'm in weak. That's why. <laughs> Right. Okay. How how can we do something to help you then? Because if if I'll if, just if I'll shut my video I'll shut my video off to see if that'll improve things. Right. So Goff is hearing me loud and clear. So that that's a good thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I can hear Henry. It's not a problem. Oh well, we well we don't really care then, do we? You know what I mean. Um. So a a few a, well not not too long ago we we looked at um, Pavlan Cave, um and. If you can remember, I was talking about Pavlan Cave. Um, I used the word fake, but I should have used the word forgery because the evidence at Pavlan Cave was genuine archaeology. But I was saying that the evidence of Pavlan Cave had come from other caves. And they'd come from other caves on a location known as Gower, not the Gower, because the Gower does not exist. <laughs> Except. When I read when I read this book, it does refer to the Gower, right? But only once, okay? Only once, okay? Because I think they 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 made the same mistake as me. So what what I'd like to do is I would like to go directly onto the images this week, and I would like to sort of do get get sort of straight down to it. And any problems with sound and stuff, let me know. Um, and and here we go and uh, we, we've got a presentation so i'm just going to you know you know the golf club on the the gower is called the gower golf club oh God. look i tell can i can i just make a comment right nobody asked you did they <laughs> The Butchers is the Butchers in the Gower. <laughs> no, it's not. The Butchers is the Butchers. It's the Butchers in Gower. <laughs> oh, God. Right, guys, can you see this on the screen? screen? Caves of caves of the Gower. Yes. yes. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, my God. It doesn't matter. Let's get on with it. <laughs> right, okay. I think we should. I think we should. Right, so there, there you go. This is just to wind golf up, right? We're um, only seeing small pictures. Yes, they're very small. Yeah. All down the left hand side is all the uh, well, that's better. I, I, if you know if you notice on the description it says this is in the Gower. This is from an academic publication. A note it's <laughs> <laughs> Do you, know, do you know? Do you know what? Right? Do you, do you know what? I I I um I sat down and I used this in one of my lectures, right? And I said um I I because I, because I, I got this new class and I and, and I've got and I've got a nice bunch of people there and um and I said actually you can get things wrong and um and sometimes you get it in your head and you think that they've said one thing and actually they meant another. And I, I, I meant I used this in a lecture actually. So what what I'm what I'm going to do today we're we're going to look at um, an area of an area of of archaeology on on a location in South Wales, Gower, um, and I wanted to say that lots of these caves, which are marked on that location, we're going to go through most of them today, um, were explored by the likes of Reverend Buckland uh, in the early 1820s, 1823. And then we have another chap um, who's called Colonel Wood, um, a gentleman with a deep interest in this period of the past. And Colonel Wood is somebody whose name comes up a fair bit. And the problem is with, with Colonel Wood's work, is that he's 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 worked in so many of those locations on the map, but the detail that he offered us is not as detailed as I would like today. Um, in his work, for example, he he comes across thousands and thousands of artifacts, human and animal remains, and so on and so on, and lots of flint. 
But um, the way he's recording things um, is is a lot to be desired. And you know, when when we when we think about Paviland, um, you know, there's a massive controversy in regards to Paviland, and this is something that we looked at when when we when we were doing that lecture. Uh, with all due respect. So the archaeology of the Glamorgan Caves must be treated today as being something that has a wide history range, right? So today we don't just mention prehistory, which is something that we're just supposed to be focusing on. We mention, we mention um, the later period of prehistory, like the Bronze Age and the Iron Age, and we mention the Roman period, and we mention the early medieval period. Uh, and we mentioned the pirate known as Lucas as well in one of the caves. But what what the what the effective thing I want to do is put across what's being found in these caves generally, right? With a few nice images, with a few choice images, and and, and with a nice few maps as well. Caves in Gower Peninsula. Can I just make a comment? I know we've talked too much about the Gower, but when you put a there in front of the Gower, does that allow you to use the word peninsula? Or is it grammatically correct to just say caves in Gower Peninsula? Or do you use a word to um, dictate the word peninsula, i.e. caves in the, in the Gower Peninsula? But if you put caves, caves in Gower, what is that correct? It doesn't really matter, does it? It does to me. It does to me and bloody um, Henry. It, it, it makes all the difference. No, it isn't. Just clap <laughs> whatever you like. Man. Just clap over it. Doesn't matter. Get your whole book because of you. I mean, They're when I was up in the Wick on the weekend, you know. Oh, shut up! Please. In the Lantwit Major or the Barry. <laughs> We're going to the Plough and Harrow. We're not going to do it. Yes, it is the plow and not the no! wick. Please stop! <laughs> hang, on, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. When we go down, actually, when you go down to Southern Down, it's called I'm uh, going to Southern Down. That's right, exactly. It's not the oh, Southern Down. Nice. Oh, now I understand. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> so their precise form in these caves themselves um, merit themselves to the actual geology. Um, and what yeah. you can see... The picture's gone the other way round now. Oh, yeah. What do you mean this gone the other way round? Are you seeing... Oh, for God, please. Are you seeing a map here which has got loads of black stuff on it? Yeah, but it's yeah. not... It's not... It's vertical, not... Oh, that's it. Ah, yeah. there you are. Oh, yeah. God! I didn't even do anything! <coughs> Shut up! And you can share up as well, Turkey. One thing, one thing, these caves on Gower are dictated by the geology, right? So what we would say is Gower, a car a carboniferous limestone, is quite prominent. And particularly towards the end of the Gower, like Worm's Head. And this is where you've got lots of the caves. And so on Gower, oh, this is driving me at the wall. On, on Gower, you can see two bands. You can see one towards the headland there, and you can see another one sweeping across the Gower, sort of from um, Oyster Mouth all the way over to the other side, all the way over to the Western Bay. And the, the, uh, there's two distinctive sets of caves. There's one near the, near the seaside which is Worm's Head and, and, and uh, the likes of Wobley and um, Port Ainan and Culver and, and Mitchin and so on, if you know the Gower. Um, and then the other one, the other band there, which is further over, is actually where the Ronda Heritage Park is. And on Ronda Heritage Park, we've got Catol and Tuthol Cave. Um, now, Catol is the one that we're not doing today, like we're not doing Paviland because we've already done it. I don't want to. I don't want to spend any any more time on Paviland. But if we if we take it out again uh, across this landscape, there, there's this there's this these black sort of in these other areas, particularly uh, in Bridgendway over to towards Pencode, you actually have a cave network, 
at um, known as um, Coida Muster. So we, we've got cave networks there that have also potentially got Paleolithic evidence. And also, if you look towards the coast there at Ogmore, I'm, have you noticed I'm deliberately missing theirs out now because I don't know what I'm doing? Uh, at Ogmore, um, you've also got um, Carboniferous Limestone, which you've got another cave network. So where, where you've got Carboniferous Limestone, you've got lots of cave networks and so on. Hopefully you're seeing all these maps. So to understand, uh, to understand a really ancient part of our past, we've got to look at these caves. These caves themselves contain data that we don't get anywhere else. So when you think about it in an open field um, in Wick or in an open field outside Barry or in an open field outside Resolven or, or Swansea or an open field in the Tonopandi, for example, you're not going to get Paleolithic archaeology. You're just not going to get it because those are areas in the main where glaciation has had its toll and, and, and taken everything away. So we, we've got to look at these caves and, 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 and they, they, they are important because they, they tell us about parts of our timeline that we hitherto really don't understand. And, and actually, one thing that I will express is when you're looking at caves, Paleolithic caves, you do find that they're not just Paleolithic, they're Mesolithic after 12,000 years ago. They're Neolithic after 8,500 years ago. They're Bronze Age after 2,100 years ago, and so on and so on. So this is this is really this is really key, interesting stuff. And what what we what we can see it again, interestingly enough, is is these. If you look at that little map there, you can basically see that at one point. Uh, at one point, the ice itself was 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 dominating the Vale of Glamorgan. Was got, had a line through the Vale of Glamorgan. This is where the ice sheet was sixteen thousand years ago and melting twelve thousand years ago. So you've got this ice sheet sort of going through Gower, um, and you've got ice sheet going through where you've got these cave networks in in the in the Glamorgan, the Vale of Glamorgan, and this is where you've got this very rich, intriguing, very um, double headed. Um, uh, avalanche of, of archaeology. So what we're going to do, we're going to go back to that other map there. Uh, hopefully this is the right way around. Um, it's tough if it's not. So what we're going to do is look at, so what we from time to time I say number one and it's on the map, right? And then we go to the images. Number two is there. You can see number two is a bit further down called Mosley Cave. So we'll do, we'll do We'll do the one which is at. We'll do the one which is at uh, Worms Head first, and then we we'll do Mouselade, which is number two, and we have got Mouselade Quarry. Right, so all all interesting stuff here. So there is there is Worms Head. Now I've never ever been to Worms Head. I, I I've I've heard that you don't go to Worms Head when when the um, tide is coming in because you get trapped. It's a bit like it's like a like, bit like being trapped on Barry Island, mind you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind being trapped on Barry Island uh, uh, with with a gorgeous woman, uh, but unfortunately, every time you get the coast guard get gets turned out, and it's no fun, you know, uh, in a sleeping bag. Uh, let's move on. Uh, so, so what we've got here, we've got Worm's Head, and and undoubtedly the geology of Worm's Head is perfect for cave archaeology. Uh, particularly on the headland there, uh, the, that, that big green swathe of grass. And what usually happens is when the water comes in, you've got, you've got one, two, three, four, four little islands surrounded by water, and it can be really treacherous as the water rises 12, 15 metres. So you're not going to get off it. Um, so here we go. So let, let's sort of go down and let's look at the first cave. So th this is this is how a cave should be. Now this is Worm's Head Cave. Let's give you, let's give you a few little bits of detail. It's on the outer head, um, the, the outer knob of the of 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 Worm's Head. Uh, it, it faces west, so it can be hit by southwesterly gales, I guess. 
uh, and the entrance passage itself um, is is accessible with difficulty. Interesting, if and the, the, but the passage itself is is really interesting. It goes it goes on for over eight meters into the rock, and and going into the rock itself, it it, it, um, it gives us a nice little bit of archaeology. And I don't know if this was, I don't know if Henry was would gave me a, a link to. We, we we spent about ten minutes looking at uh, looking at crystal objects that had been found in Spain. If you can remember a few weeks ago, well. Yeah. It, Interesting enough, in this cave, in a chamber at the end, they found a crystal object. Now we don't know when this crystal object dated to. They they found flint flakes. They they found um, quartz quartz implements. Uh, they found sling stone and animal bones, and they actually found human remains as well. A lot of this dated to not the 1920s, 1923 to be precise. And so you've got this you've got this long passage which is which heads in into a chamber that opens up, which is six meters height by six meters across. So it's a really interesting chamber. Now we are to remember folks that, that many years ago, 12,000 years ago, this, these caves, these caves on were, were far away from the sea, right? They, they were definitely very far away from the sea, 30,000 years ago when we're talking about evidence in a long hole cave and Deborah's hole cave on the Gower and Pavilion cave. And, but even, even 12,000 years ago, Gower itself was, was miles and miles away from the sea, but miles away from the state sea still, still miles away from the sea. Um, so these caves themselves would have been absolutely perfect for whatever they were used for. But there's a debate about what they were used for, and do you know, I I teach a I, I teach a class on I, I I teach a class on a Wednesday evening, uh, and for once on Wednesday the reception was was a one, and I and this is a one today as well, which is great. Touch wood. Uh, well, I don't care don't, don't care what the reception is like in Wick. Wick is a tip anyway, but uh, but for me teaching you guys today it's great. I love it. And and one thing I, one thing I was telling people last night is that. In archaeology, you can never say that something is something, right? So what I, what I mean by that, I, you can't say that because there's a body in a cave, it's a burial. Uh, and that came from a wise craft made on Tuesday. One, one, of my, one of my gang on Tuesday, like you, doing it on the internet, she said, uh, she said you, you've talked about, I think she said it with this one straight away. You talked about fragmentary jaw bones and teeth. Uh, do you think it's a burial? And I said, I knew what I knew what the question was, and I said no. And she said, Yeah, that's what I was thinking. She said, How do you know that these bodies weren't dragged into the cave by an animal, right? Like a hyena, because in one of the caves it's called it's called the hyena den. Yeah. So. If you go, if you go back to this, if you look again and you see wh where you've got that that black that, that black line there through through the beckons, up there you've got Dana Rogoff. You've got the Dan Dana Rogoff cave network, which is which is similar caves to the Gower. Now, when you, when you go to Dan Dana Rogoff, there's a cave at Dana Rogoff, which is which is actually which is bone cave, and there's loads of bodies in it, and they're still there today. Now, why are they there? Well, they're all stacked up. They're all just like, um, it could be that an animal went there, drank bodies and feasted upon them. They're not burials. So you can't always look at archaeological evidence as being archaeological evidence that is actually um, completely the human element. So when you do find bones in a cave, you've got to be very careful what they mean. Yeah, um, because in many ways, people always jump to the conclusion that caves were used for burying people. And I'm thinking, well, why the hell didn't they bloody live in them as well? And then the answer comes in later on when we look at the caves and you think, well, they're not just used for, well, one or two of them were used for living in. Some caves were not perfect for living in, right? Um, some were used for industrial processing in, in the Bronze Age. 
Yep. So, so this, this is the thing you see, we, 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 we look at this and, and we think we, we, we must be open with, with how we look at the archaeology and how to interpret it. Somebody said to me a few years ago in, in a Christmas card, um, your lectures are about lies, 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 and more lies again. And this is the same person who's been paying to give me to paying for me to give them lectures for the past 10 years, right? And and actually um, I'm giving you an interpretation. And he's paying for that interpretation. And he's calling me a liar, right? But what he uh, we've had this conversation, he's not actually calling me a liar. What he's doing is he's he's saying that many ways of interpreting what we've got in these caves can be um can alter over time yeah it comes with that adage doesn't it you're in a relationship with somebody at the beginning you're deeply in love with them and after after 10 years you can't stand you can't stand to be around them or you meet somebody you don't really like them at the beginning and then at the end and you, you know you love them to bits Right. And it, so what I'm trying to say is the meaning of things in caves transcendingly change over time. And so should the views of archaeologists. We should be more open and we should be more um, offerable to what people are saying to us. Do you know, um, Goff, you've been with me occasionally and, and we've had one or we've had amazing lectures in Landsworth Major. And there's been people in that room as I'm coming towards the end of the lecture. And they said, what about this? And I thought, my God, I didn't think of that. And it's absolutely amazing, right? And I love it. I love them for it because they're, they're bringing me something. And, and, and you know, uh, Goff, you'll, you'll know full well that I'm, I'm prepared to say, OK, I'm wrong. I've made a mistake. Sometimes that, those are the best moments because it, we, we, it, it's great. But what we what we do have in these in these types of caves is evidence. Now we, we've we've mentioned what's in there, but we've also mentioned there's lots of animal evidence from beyond twelve thousand years ago, uh, and and then we've got Neolithic evidence which dates to seven thousand years ago. Right, all of this is obscure. Yeah, and um, one of the things with this being all obscure is that the ways it's been excavated, the way it's been jumbled around, the way it's been altered and changed. But what we can say with the, with the evidence of fauna, with the evidence of animal remains within a cave network like this, it tells us of the animal story, not just of the, the story uh, associated with human beings. Now, I, I've said to you, I, I think it may have been last week, we, we, we've, most, people talk about, most people talk about the human aspect and, and now we're talking about the animal aspect. I don't know, it, it wasn't last week, I think it was a few weeks ago. But anyway, this itself is Mao's, Mao's Land Cave. So we're just Mao's Land Cave is number two, which is on there, number three, right? Mao's Land Cave. Mao's Laid, Mao's Laid Cave, not Mao's Land, Mao's Laid Cave. M-E-W-S-L-A-D-E Cave. Now, this itself is um, within a ravine um, near Mousley Bay, within a steep ravine, which is 28 meters above sea level. Now, this itself is a very tight fissure. Now, you can immediately say, well, you're not going to live in there, are you? And the answer is, no, you're not going to bloody live in there. right? But what is going on in there? Is it for burial? Do, are animals dying in there? Are, are, are animals dragging human beings in there to feast upon what's going on but they are still it's still archaeology yeah so you you have these you have these fissures which 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 are very tight that's only one meter high one meter wide um and it goes into the cliff for nearly three meters um in investigation of this was in 1914 and it yielded animal bones of recent species Oh, well, that's a bit of a bugger, isn't it? What the hell does that mean? Recent species. What, what, what does that tell us? Um, which is a bit of a shame, actually. It would have been nice to have had more evidence. But within here as well, if, uh, if, if I may go to another image. Have we got another image? There it is. There it is again. Um, also in there, they, they found a microlithic point, which, which dates it to the 
Mesolithic evidence, you know, Mesolithic period, sometime 9,000 years ago, a microlith from the Mesolithic period. But this is an odd one. This is an odd one. When they were working there as well, they found traces of iron working. And you're thinking, blow me, totally blow me, right? Because because how 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 can you have iron working in in such a tight narrow area and you're thinking well why not why 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 am i setting rules let's just not set rules let let's open the box open the genie out of the box and maybe understand that there are the different ways of doing things in the past that we can't rightly understand yeah so the cave thus appears to have been occupied in mesolithic times and again used in more recent times but but again, it, it, it's trying to get that raison d'etre of, of understanding um, what this is all about. Uh, and, and it goes back to that again, that do we always need to know what things are about? This is that other location at Mousley. This, this is a site. This is a site of a quarry. Um, and what we do find is, is, is in the 1800s, this wasn't like this. It was in the 1800s that they were quarrying. Now, as they were quarrying in the 1800s, there was reference to um, up to the remains of seven individuals being found, skulls being found within within fissures in the rock, which which went into the quarry. So as they were quarrying this out, they, they were following the fissures and there was an open space and they were finding bones and stuff. And the other stuff itself is actually, it was recorded as being extinct mammalia, which was being excavated sometime in the 18, 1840s, 1850s by this guy Wood. Right? We, we mentioned Wood, haven't we? We mentioned Wood earlier on. This, this was the other guy who was excavating in the caves on the Gower. Now, he was excavating there from the 1840s into the 1850s. He told us that that that. that, that, that was extinct mammalia within these fissures but what what does this mean well you know and this is why this lady uh, in on tuesday said look carl um it, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're burials and she's right and 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 the other thing as well is we we assume and this this is obvious as well or is it but I'm not going to ask you guys. I'm just going to spit it out. the uh, The remains of mammal, the remains of other mammals in that cave may have been dragged in there by other mammals. So you could interpret the bones in the cave as being dragged in there by human beings to feast upon. But equally, you could say that the same reason why human bones are in there that other animals have dragged the human and the other mammals in there to feast upon them. Yeah. So or what about this guys yeah and 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 we we don't think this but there is evidence at one site i i think i'm right in saying i'm not exactly sure but when they were excavating um shannondar cave in the um from the 1950s and onwards in in iraq there was a body found in shannondar cave that they said oh this is another burial it wasn't it was somebody who went into the cave there was a rock fall and he was just left there. Yeah, that's not a burial. Yeah. So what we might find is human remains in a cave, somebody who just crawled in there and died. You may think that's a bit nuts, but it's not because we do have the archaeological evidence elsewhere. And we do have the archaeological evidence because when we go to the likes of, back to the map again, find, through, find we, we've done two and three on our back on, on four. When we, when we look at the, the, the archaeology, at the old Roman city of Carinium, when 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 we when we think about Carinium, um, which is known as Sirencester, double checking something a minute, um, they they were excavating and they found a body. They they found a body um, that was actually a soil core system and just died. It wasn't a burial. They weren't buried in a hypercore system. They crawled in there and they just died, right? So that's not a burial, is it? it it's it's not a burial. How it's not a burial. So it, it's it's accidental, 
Or is it accidental because they went in there to die? Do you know what I mean? There's all these different... But but no, it's not all these different interpretations. It, it's what happened, right? You don't have to interpret that at all. It's actually what happened. So the next one we're going to... Uh, the next one we're going to mention is Hound's Hole. Right, and then we're going to have a deep look look at Kutch Hole, and then we're going to look at Deborah's Hole. Right, Deborah's Hole is absolutely fascinating. But before we actually go to Deborah's Hole, uh, and, and we have a good explore and we have a good look around her hole, uh, we're going to look at Hound's Hole. Uh, now, Hound's Hole itself is number four, next to number five, which is Pavilion, which is Pavilion Cave, uh, which is which is Goat Hole Cave, which we did a few weeks ago. Now, Hound Hole is, is a little bit of a fissure in the rock, and it's um, it's about 45 metres west of Goat Hole. It's at the same level. And and note the words. You know, the biggest one of the problems when we looked at Pavlan Cave, I mentioned about I, I mentioned about this thing that, um, you know, water lapping into the cave and, you know, uh, damaging the archaeology and so on. What we have the similar thing in the notes in my in, in the notes here that I've got in front of me, right? It says Hound's Hole, 45 meters, um, was invaded by the sea. Right? Now, if that's being invaded by the sea, and then I'm saying that Goat Hole was invaded by the sea, how have we got the evidence at Goat Hole in the first place? Right? Now what I'm going to do, go go back. We're not going to do anything more about Pavlan, but I want you to remember the Pavlan lecture. Now, this goat hole, th this other one at Hound's Hole, near Goat Hole itself, it says that the entrance is seven metres high by four metres wide. It's a passage that leads into it, um, which is 2.5 metres in length. Um, and then there's another passage that goes on for 20 metres. How much of that is invaded by the sea? We don't know. But as you know, when you get water forced into um, in, into a rock system, in, into uh, a passageway, it causes some kind of pseudo vacuum that, that everything is, every space in there is invaded and it's all everything sucked out, right? Um, now, I don't really know much more about that because I, I'm not there when the sea is in there. Yeah. Now, this was observed by Reverend Buckland again. Now, when we did. Oh, sorry, Pavlin. When we did Goat Hole Cave, we, we said that Reverend Buckland was there for two days and he found all this stuff. Right. Well, he was hardly on the Gower for more than four. So how did he also look at this cave? Now, it's a lot more difficult looking at caves back then because you didn't have the modern torches that we've got today and the modern lighting systems and all the rest of it. You've got to have lanterns and all that crap, right? So when, when this other cave was being looked at, they found faunal remains. Um, and listen to this words. Now, this has to be noted from, from the writings of Dilwyn, who was the one who was telling us about Dilwyn was telling us about um, Pavlan Cave and the work of his friend Reverend Buckland in the 1820s. Dilwyn, Dilwyn said that sometime before 1836 they had found Roman coins within this cave at Hound's Hole. Roman coins were also found at Pavilion, but almost exactly the same thing um, was described in regards to Pavilion Cave within the cave earth, or in other words, among the rubbish, right? There was various evidence, and there was these Roman coins going back to Goat Hole. It was all mixed up and churned up within the rubbish. Um, faunal remains were found, and, and you're thinking, well, how can you deduce much from that other than the fact that the cave had been used, but it all been churned up? And how had it been churned up? Exactly the sea. So what we're going to do next, we're going to, I, I want us to dive into Deborah's hole in a moment, but I want us to look at um, Kutch Cave, which is number six uh, on the map there. So these are all very near the coast, Kutch Cave. And um, Kutch Cave is at sea level. 
right, okay, now let's just work this out. Kutch Cave is at sea level, it's below a fort. Though the sea enters the main cave, there is a ledge at the back above a rock face, 10 meters high, about 15 meters from the mouth. So it's a long passageway, 15 meters into the cave, and there's a ledge. So therefore, the, if the sea goes in there, it doesn't affect the archaeology. Really? Hmm. This ledge is two meters wide. It's a ledge, and there's a chamber beyond, which is 10, um, <coughs> which is 10 meters long by about four meters. So I don't need to know that. But in 1919, they found the remains of work stones. But do I know anything more about those work stones? Do I? Right, which is a bit of a shame, right? So we're gonna we're gonna explore Deborah's hole now, and I'm just gonna have a bit of a drink. Deborah's Hole is number seven on the map. So got it? Good. Uh, Deborah's Hole. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Um, that's that's a famous actor called Deborah, and she's got ear piercings. That's De is Deborah's Hole, right? But we'll, uh, we'll have a look at, at Deborah's Hole. Uh, there's Deborah's Hole, right? And uh, as, as, as one woman said on, on, um, on Tuesday, that's a very fine hole and very mysterious, as most holes are. So Deborah's Hole is situated a little, um, little below um, 60 metres off um, high sea level. OK, um, and this itself is a little bit of an uh, entrance. The entrance is a passage of um, just under four and a half metres long. Nice. It's very, very narrow. It's, uh, it's, un it's under a metre high, so you can, very difficult to get in there. But it leads to a chamber, which is almost square. Just off three high, just off 2.5 long and two wide. When I went to school, that's not square, but you know what I'm talking about. And there's a chamber in there, and there's various small crevices opening from the chamber into Deborah's hole. Now, again, um, why Buckland is exploring Deborah's hole in again in 1823 I, I i i mystified right but deborah's hole holds a clue to the archaeology of the archaeology of pavlan cave now what i'm going to do is is i'm going to go to um henry henry tell us a few bits of actual archaeological facts about Pavlan Cave, and I will give you one of the archaeological facts that is exactly the same but more prevalent in Deborah's Hole. Go on, shoot. Henry, anything you can remember, give it to us. Henry! Where is he? What about you, Goff? What, what, what can you remember from, uh, what can you remember, Goff, from Pavlan Cave? Oh, it was uh, some... A, fa a family, the uh, Tal was a Talbot family. Um, That's uh, right. Living there, and they they think that um, they collected um, uh, various artifacts from all around, uh, put them in the cave, and made the discovery. And it was this bloke's girlfriend that um, that was with him yeah. when they found it, and um, all a hoax. Now. Is there, that is all true. That is all true, yeah. But give me one little bit of the uh, body. What, why was it called the Red Lady? Oh, because it was sprinkled with, uh, um, was it ochre? Red ochre. Red ochre, yeah. It was stained, it. stained, and they don't know. Well, you seem to cast a bit of a, you know, dispersions on that, whether it was done intentionally or unintentionally, we don't, you don't know. Yes. Right. Now, now this is, this is key. This is very, very key, right? When um, some of the, some of the, some of the stuff at Pavlan Cave is extremely dubious. And um, one of the points is that the, the, the bones that they found are the only bones that they found in the cave, human bones. It's a bit strange being that, there should be other bones there, and the only bones that were ever found were the ones boat found by Buckland that day, in a in a in, a, in, a, in his two day excavation at Pavlan Cave, right? But it said that the bones were actually um, stained, 
properly stained, right? Uh, but then it said that the other artifacts, such as your shells, were actually sprinkled. They, they weren't impregnated by the staining. And you're thinking, well, this doesn't make sense. And I, and I explained why it didn't make sense, because to, for, for the bones to be completely stained like that, they would the, the body would have been need to be defleshed. Uh, and I mentioned all that. But uh, and then without going any more onto the other lecture and then Buckland is said to have reported um, items within this cave in 1861 that this cave, Deborah's Hole, was thoroughly excavated. It's known as the Red Cave because there's a thick layer of red earth in this cave, which was discovered in 1861. Not sprinklings of red earth, as we see with described at Pavilland. There's a thick layer of red earth within this cave. Now, this is key because I do believe that some of the evidence from here, from Pavlan Cave, actually came from this cave. Um, and and it, it, it was thoroughly excavated in 1861, which is a bit of a shame. They found unworked flint blades. They found, they found fauna itself that dated to exactly the same period that we're talking about that we see at Pavlan. But there was an almighty cock-up in the archaeological excavations. And the almighty cock-up was that the layers which were excavated in 1861 were not recorded properly. Surprise, surprise. Um, and that for me is devastating because um, this is a cave that was, in, that was invaded by Buckland. Um, but then we talk about another cave, right? We talk about another cave. Right, so if we go to on there, we look at another cave called Long Hole, which is where well, you can see a bit further on the coast there, eight. It's a bit farther, far away. Now, one argument that I've got with Buckland is he managed to do all this in the space of about a few days, right? And um, um, uh, and he went in all these caves. If if you go to the, if you go, if you go to the landscape today it's not the easiest landscape to get around in a car i've got to be honest with you it's not it's it's a um, i've been down within this landscape a number of times right you're driving around in a car right narrow lanes right you can't exactly get to places easily so how the hell would you have got to these places in a horse and trap and visited all these bloody things at the same time do you know what i mean it makes me so angry that no nobody's academically looked at these problems yeah this is this is long hole cave I need to get away from my rantings because we need to leave them there. Long Hole Cave. Now, Long Hole Cave itself uh, is again 40 meters above sea level, uh, limestone crag surrounded by grassy slopes. Um, it's very close to Port Ion, just, just, just over a mile away from Port Ion towards the west. And the entrance faces south southeast, which is probably okay. You don't have the southwest gales, nice, okay. Yeah, if you're thinking about people occupying this, and all right. One thing, at one point I need to make is that um, carb lime itself, over time when it's left out in the open, it really fractures quite rapidly like this, you know? It, it, it changes and altered over time. So lots of these caves that we are looking at have seen a lot of erosion since since they were uh, investigated. When I say a lot of erosion, you know, a little few inches here and there. But over the thousands of years that they, we, they, they've been used and seen and... and um, and expressively given us evidence, um, you know, a lots have gone, you know, uh, that, that we're talking about there, um, there, the entrance itself is 3.5 meters wide. You can see it. It narrows as you go into two meters wide and it, and it goes on for 13 meters. It's quite a long cave, actually. It, it really is. It's, it's, it's a long one. The longest one year is 50 meters, which is a long one. And, and back in the day, it would have been a lot longer when it, when it was used. But, um, and the height varies from one and a half meters. So you can still sort of walk down it to about 2.3 meters. So it's a, it's a nice cave. It's an interesting one. Again, botheration, it was excavated in 1861. That means that um, I, I feel it probably wasn't investigated properly. Yeah. And it was investigated by um, Colonel Wood. Now, um, within archaeological circles, it's it's wrong of me to criticise another archaeologist, right? Um, and I'm probably not criticising Colonel Wood in the right way. 
this is 1861. Yeah. And it's lots of his artifacts have been lost. Lots of his records have been lost. So he may have taken in intricate, precise records, but the archaeology is not with us today. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to give him that fair due. Um, when when they get into the cave, there are deposits of over two metres of archaeology, two metres of archaeology. Now, that to me is a lot of mud to work through. When when as an archaeologist, you're excavating through a metre's worth of, of mud and you've got a two metre wide trench and it's four metres long. Right. That would take properly weeks to excavate. Right. But Wood is excavating in here. Wood is a bit like Buckland in one way that he also excavates Deborah's Hole in 1861. At the same time, he's excavating other caves, including this one at Long Hole. Now, this, this, this thick layer of deposits is directly above uh, the rock itself. Um, and this was was one of the first instances that, that Wood offers us some data. And he basically says, look, what we've got, we've got flint tools in amongst the material of animals going back beyond 12,000 years ago. So that was good. That was good. And he basically doesn't go into the stratigraphy and environmental evidence as we would like. This wasn't done until 1969. There was some archaeology left to be worked on in 1969. Um, and what, what he basically says is that this cave itself was at the moment of the extent of the last glaciation. So this was the thing that people looked out on um, at this vast tundra landscape with a big pack of ice above them. Um, so what we've got is bones and other stone artifacts um, going from very early times. And when I say very early times, the archeology span in this cave also dates to similarly uh, what we see with Gotol Cave, uh, Pavilion Cave, Buckland's Cave. Yeah, so, so we, we, we've got to uh, we, we've got to think that there might have been some, this might have been another cave that Buckland visited, but I've got no reference that Buckland ever visited this cave. But we've got similar evidence in this cave that we see at Paviland, and this stuff is, is fairly intact. So we're told, or so we want to think when, when Wood is excavating it. But, but Colonel Wood isn't going to be thinking about, you know, material coming from here going to Pavlan Cave because because he wouldn't. He's not gonna he's did he question or he's not gonna question Buckland like like I'm doing. So I think oh can you can uh, so I don't bugger up my connection here and go off the screen which um what is the time one of you boys please a quarter to tw two or twelve Nearly. Blow me, blow me off a cliff with a feather and tickle me under the armpit. So I didn't think it was that late. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at um, after the break, we're going to come back to this one, uh, which is Mitchin Hole. But what we're going to do is, and you can see Mitchin Hole very close to the coast. This is actually a very famous hole. This is this is this is Culver Hole. Now, Culver Hall is at number nine on the description there. It's up on the um, north western coast of Gower. There it is, number nine. It's a place called Langenna. And, 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 and again, I, I find Gower a, a, a completely different landscape compared to anywhere else in Wales it is so so odd it, it it's not it's not it's not Vale of Glamorgan it's not valleys it's not West Wales it's not Anglesey it, it's not um center of Wales it's not Gwent it is very very different everything about the Gower is very different and am I backing off the wrong um heads that one would you agree with that Goff? Yeah, 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 definitely. 
Yes. So Culver Hall. Now, when we think about Culver Hall, we think about Lucas. We, we think about the pirate Lucas, where he was holed up here, and this is where his call his contraband was, and so on and so on. Culver Hall itself, Berry Homes, is, it, 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 it's got a narrow entrance at the base, uh, which is washed by high tides. Now, obviously, this is built up and it, it's, it's going to be a very important place in later years. Now, what we do find is that as the as the fissure in the rock rises, there's more and more archaeology. Now, this was a site probably looked at many times. And when it was used for a uh, privateering, uh, which we'll call it, and, and, I, and I've, got, I've got a little book over there, which I'm just going to grab, which, which is not in my notes. So I'm just going to, um, you know, I, I, I didn't actually do this. And I just probably... Uh, wanted to. I've got my book on pirates here, Captain Kidd, and all the rest of it. I'm just going to see if I got him in you. Um, if he's not in you, be surprised. Um, do, 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 do. do you know what? Right, I can't find him. So, such, such a major pirate with his own sort of little hole. Um, and he's not in my book. Oh, that's not good, is it? Anyway, you can look at you can look at the association with uh, Lucas. Um, you, you can get that on the internet anywhere, I think. Um, oh, nothing in you. I'll, uh, that's a shame. Anyway, so what we've got over time, what probably happened is with the early archaeology, um, there is going to be damage to the early archaeology. There's going to be alteration to the early archaeology. But nevertheless, in 1861, human remains were found um, behind this edifice, which is obviously a lot modern compared with anything that's paleolithic or mesolithic. Now, this was found by Wood again in 1861. Um, how it was still there, I don't know. Um, and it, more work in 1893 and 1924. Now, within this net, within this sort of fissure in the rock, they found the remains of 11 individuals. Now, when do the dates of these individuals, when, when are the dates we think that they may, some of them may actually date date to the Bronze Age because there was a bronze, bit of Bronze Age pottery found. Some date to the Roman, some might date to the Roman period. Now, if it, if it may precise um, bring into your mind, there has been mention of the Romans with some of these other caves. We've got Hound's Hole, Roman evidence found in there. We've got Paviland Cave, Roman evidence being found in there as well. Again, um, we've actually got um, Samian pottery being found at um, Paviland Cave as well, which has come all the way from France, which is a bit odd. Roman coin found at Culver Hole, very interesting. And, 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 and other coins found there as well. There's a glass bead from the Roman period found in here as well. And, uh, brooches from um, from the uh, the two hundreds and other coins from the one hundreds is is very odd that that evidence I, I would say. But then in nineteen thirty one, more human remains were found. Now don't jump to the conclusion that they're anything to do with this pirate, right? Because I'm not going to do that. Um, but these thirty odd other human remains were actually found. Uh, with a variety of ranges of age and height and date and whatever. Um, and these were actually found in there as well, in, in, in the grey clay with pottery. Um, and this itself represented, um, and we do believe that these bones actually come from the, the, the Neolithic period and the Bronze Age as well. So we're talking about a date range of 5,000, 4,000 years ago. And before that, we've got lots of flint bone um, and, the, and interesting enough, it uses the word disturbed, disturbed evidence by storm action. That is very interesting because it's all churned up and mixed up. Yeah. I'd like to know how churned up and mixed up this archaeology was. You know, was it all 
a bit of skull over there from Eric and a, a bit of bone from Jacob and then over here, Janine's skull with a bit of bone from Jacob. You know, how was how was it? Yeah. But this is rather this is rather interesting. There wasn't much animal bone found in here, which is very different from all the other caves. Yeah. Um, and then somebody suggested it's obviously a place where people are being buried. But there's a problem with that theory. We get bodies over a wide date range, but no cremations. Because in human history, you get inhumations, burials, cremations, inhumations, and cremations, um, and, and times that bodies are absent or whatever. But if you're going to use this for burial, why didn't they put cremations within this network? What is going on here? It's unfavorable position for habitation until you do this with it. Yeah. Um, what is going on? Very interesting. Can we say it's for burial? Well, it's for burial at certain times and for certain reasons. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But then again, cremated evidence wasn't placed in there. Very odd. We mentioned the Roman stuff, but also there's Iron Age stuff there as well. A, a little fig, female figurine was found in there. I'd like to see that with, with, with Iron Age pottery. So what, when, when, we, when we look at all this, and, and odd, oddly enough, there, there's a brooch found from the 800s. And you're thinking, right, right, okay, okay. Is it, is it used for burial? Is it, what is going on? Yeah. Um, and when we, when I use the word, when I say what is going on, yeah, we've, we've got to, that then challenges the idea that people lived in caves. It also challenges the idea that people just buried in caves. And, and then it opens out a new uh, raison d'etre to what these caves were used for over a long period of time. And we're going to say everything, everything. And and I think by opening our minds and saying it was used for everything. Alters the idea of the mysticism with the caves. So what I would like to do, there's a cave that we're going to look at afterwards, after the break, which is known as um, Sprit Sail Tor Cave. Now, as Goff knows, a Sprit Sail is a small sail on the um, uh, on the. Uh, bow on the aft of a, of a vessel, small little triangle or, or square sails. There's a sprit sail tour cape. Um, I think I got that description right. Um, and it's number 10. That's what we're going to do after the break. So what we're going to do <coughs> is we're going to we're going to look at that after the break. We're going to ask if there's any questions. And uh, I'm going to, what am I going to do? Oh, stop the screen sharing. That really worked well. Uh, I, I, I got to be honest with you. I think it's because I'm, I'm sitting somewhere else today. I think we had a few problems last week. Uh, I'm just going to see what um, what Henri says. We're, we're going to do questions now, Henri. Henri's put a few questions in the chat box. He says, uh, someone has put up a video called Gower Caves, not the Gower. You numpty. There seems to be fines in the 1960s, but I can't get to file. Yeah. Good. True. Would the cave have been a lot larger originally to do iron work, but with erosion, there is less cave now? Yes. We said that. Yes. Do we have any underwater cave systems off this coast? Oh, you bitch. That is a nice one. That is a real nice one. I like that one. Do we have any underwater cave systems off this coast? And you know what? None of my notes are no, there's no reference to any cave systems off the coast. However, the answer is yes. Because if we think about this logically, water levels risen and people would have lived in those cave systems and they become flooded. Do you know what? We have not mentioned that in any lecture. Right. And I love the way you've saw you've seen that. And I like that. And I've not had any discussion in anything that I've read. And I like that you've come at it from that angle. I like that one. 
Thank you. Yeah, it was the map that you had with the, the um, which showed that the land mass was further out, and it, one would suspect that there would be cave systems out there originally. Uh, you you are very right, and what what we're going to do? We're just going to we're just going to put that little eye in uh, fly in the ointment a minute. Let's just do that quickly. Let's just um, let's do my eye in the ointment, and we're going to go to um. There we go. That's what we're going to do. So, if we if we go to the other map, don't we? Um, if we look at the geology map, uh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what you, what you can assume, and I'm going to say that if you look across there, you've got this this you've got this black band, haven't you? So that black band itself, directly, if you look on the left there, that's where Tembe is. So if you go where that dot is, and there's Coldy Island, yeah, yeah, which is which is carb lime. We, we mentioned caves there. We did mention caves there. That band itself would stretch across there. And then it stretches across Swansea Bay to Scare Point, which is also carb. And then it goes across there and it goes across the band then all the way through Vog. Uh, and and you, you, that is a wonderful observation. So you could assume that what we've got to do is this. Yeah. This land between across this Tenby Bay over to Gower was dry land at the same time as all the evidence that we're talking about. And there would have been there would have been caves. And undoubtedly full of the same archaeology that we're talking about and I, I i i think that is great yeah that i i i have never seen that i've never read that and i love that that is nice i like it i do well top max <laughs> because because if you look you if you look there you can see the other line there above the south wales coal field yeah and yeah that red line, the red line, black line, that black line itself dictates the coal field. Um, south of there is the coal field, and that between the, the, the black lines, the two black bands, that's the coal field. There is some coal, not coal north of that, and whatever, and there's a little, probably a bit of coal south of that as well. So, uh, love it, love it, love it. So um, okay, so we're going. I, I I'm going to take. Um, I don't want a break, but I I am going to take a break because um, it's not good to keep going. So, um, right. So, um, you've done your bit, Henri. Anything you want to do, Goff? No, no. It's, it's something I wasn't aware of. All these caves. It's very interesting. Yeah. So somebody said to me they've been down the gal. They didn't know any of these caves existed. I I obviously knew about Pavaland. Oh, yes, yes. Well, I didn't know the other ones. So many. But when you think about it, Goff, there's still many more to be found. There certainly and, are. Uh, <laughs> and when you, again, again, I, I, I've been asked to do work, work down on the Gower, you know, walks for, um, we used to do young explorers, right? And I used to look at a map and I used to say, well, that's only a couple of miles away from that. But it usually used to take me half an hour. Because the roads was just so narrow and, and it, things were so steep and all over the place and you couldn't find stuff. And you used to go down valleys and the next minute you'd be going out <laughs> upon an open moorland and the next thing you'd be in a really dark valley and then you'd have the coast. Um, and then you'd have, and I just couldn't, I could never, um, I, I could never really work it all out. And um, yeah, that's one thing I wouldn't write a book on is the, is the archaeology of Gower particularly if yeah. I called it the archaeology of the Gower. Maybe yeah. I should write a book saying the Gower, right? And that would really wind people up. <laughs> right, what we'll, what we'll do, I don't really need much of a break, so we're going to have a five-minute break and we'll be back, okay? Okay. Okay. We're, we're, we're just, we're just, we're just water our trough a little bit and we'll crack on. We'll catch you then. Ah, <laughs> tough the world, yes, ha, 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 ha. Do you know what? I, I, I think, I think people in Ireland would actually hate me going over. Do you think that's why? Nobody's talking to me now. I'm just thinking. 
I check them. I'm checking my card was. It's definitely not an action that I got. You see, just talking to her. Just he's more he's more gypsy than anything. I don't believe what I don't believe a thing he's saying. I think you're no. joining Tom Cruise as one of the worst accents ever. Don't you don't 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 you ever say to me, "Sit out, me, sir, sir, sit out." Hey, no, I, 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 I don't really understand what you're trying to talk, talk about here. Sir, sir, down there, red road, road in, sir. What do you mean? Tom Cruise can do a brilliant Irish accent when when he's drunk. Right. Okay. Right. All right then. I I I should be going outside and give my turkey a cuddle. I, I don't know what to do. I'm a bit lost. I'm gonna have an orange. I'm gonna share an orange with a turkey. He wants an orange. That's good. And then I'll be back. I'm starry, starry night. Paints my palette blue and grey. Look out on a summer's day. Starry Vincent shines of styra blue. How I know you, you. Do you know, I, I, I sound so romantic sometimes. Hey, top of the world to you, sir. Do you know what? I knew a leprechaun once. He used to love me lots. He showed me where the gold was. I turned my back and the gold had disappeared. Lying little Irish person. But then again, I think leprechauns are wonderful. And I tell you what, the person who had the worst Irish accent was Terry Wogan. Because he used to sound a bit like this. Hey, he used to be very good, Terry Wogan. Never mind. Oh, it's lovely. It's lovely it is, Terry Wogan. I, I think I need to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and feed an orange to the turkey. Because he likes them. Cool. Well, then again, I'm looking at this. I get to work. That's good. Oh, I don't want to do that. I'm loving this, having great fun. Okay, new card. Come on, lovely. Do you want a bowl of orange? Here you go. 
to go. Come on, lovely. Come on. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. I can't give you a lorry. Did you go on it? Don't know. So, bingo. Oh, Come on, you dog, I hear you. Come on, you Oh, dear. Come on, then. Look at that there, then. Come on, see, 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 Hello, folks. Right. Bloody hell am I. Must have gone. Hello. Are you all there? It's not the words, yes, sir. Hello, this is Terry Wogan. It's a wonderful word, you do, you see. I had a, I had a much better, I had a much better Terry Wogan accent. I think when you do Terry Wogan, you've got to sound a bit like this. You know, all the leprechauns, I don't know what to say. I was wandering down the road, it was, it was a leprechaun, it was terrible. He stole my money and he gave it to someone else, it's terrible. Do you know, oh, you could sound like this. My name is Ian Paisley. The bloody IRA, we got to kill them all. That's oh, terrible, I said, eh? Why did he? Why did Ian Paisley manage to get away, away with everything you'd say? And it'd be it'd be it'd be inflammatory, wouldn't it? If he said burn the IRA, it'd be oh my god! You wouldn't get away with that on TV now, would you? Did you ever meet Ian Paisley, Henry? <laughs> I don't think he's talking to me because I think Ian Paisley is Henry's hero. You can see it now, can you? I don't think so. <laughs> You got to destroy the bloody area. Burn them all. Burn them all. Burn them. You might be going Sorry, down the wrong road big time. Am I? All right, then let, let's just uh, let, let's just stop. The thing is, you can't you can't insult um unionists and you can't insult nationalists. But uh, well, Republican are they they are nationalists, aren't they? But they like call themselves Republicans. Bloody hell. Dunno. Anyway, right, let, let's do let's do Sprit Sale Cave. Right. Now this is uh, this this is this is a rather interesting one, right? So we're we're gonna we're gonna look at the we we'll look at the location, right? 
Um, and let's let's go on. Right there, there we go. We we're looking at that before the break, weren't we? And 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 then we're, we're going to do that. And oh, so oh my God, it's all gone. The pot. Right here we go. Um, right. So right, we we'll go down there. We we we've done Deborah's hole. I was quite excited to do that one. And um. So, so, but go, 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 go. Is that showing okay? So we look at Prit Sale right now. Prit Sale itself is is there uh, up on the north as well. Um, um, but, but, what's that? Nothing there. There's, oh yeah, I forgot to screen share. Sorry. What an absolute, what an absolute nug. Getting well. Well, I'll put it this way. Well, I'll put it this way. Um, I'm always reminded of that one-hour lecture I did with Goff, um, and, and they were all sat there. I think there was five of them. And at the end, uh, Goff turned around and said, "Well, I really enjoyed your lecture, but it was shit." Yeah, Shame there was only one who can show you image. And then Goff's excuse was, "I got such a nice voice, it sent him to sleep." But right, are you seeing? Are you seeing this now? Yeah. Yes. Right. Days in the Gower Peninsula. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to see a grown man cry. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I did have one person contact me saying, "Why? Why are all the caves called the Gower?" I don't know. <laughs> Not the Gower. Why? Are, shut up. Why are all the Roman sites on on Gower called the Gower? And I just thought, forget it. Anyway, um, so what we've got, we've got Sprit Sail um, Tour Cave. I don't have an image of it, which is a bit strange. There's two. Separate entrances to this cave. Um, and they're 20 meters above sea level. It would have been nice to have got an image. I don't know, it's probably but, um so, so these caves themselves as long end up going into a little bit of a chamber. Anyway, um, so the, 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 the cave is discovered in 1839 or human jawbones. Oh, there, there's this thing with human jawbones, isn't there? We mentioned human jawbones early, earlier on. Um, and this is the thing we find bits of human remains in these uh, in 1849 they, they excavated into one of the chambers and they actually found the remains of um, fauna that existed before the melting of the ice so 12,000 years ago and they found that one of the chambers because you've got the east, east chamber in the west chamber but within this sort of detail there um the remains of hyena bones so it was referred to as hyena's den spritzel torque is referred to as hyena's den maybe that's the image i should have looked at um, and it's it was 49 as the hyena's den because they're in hyena's den Lots of remains in there, and that might actually link to a hyena dragging some human beings in there. Um, and that's why we've got the human jaw bones in there. Very interestingly. Um, it said that within this, looking at the remains in 1933 again, uh, this indicated that there, there's evidence in there that goes back into that period that we look at that evidence dating to Pavilion Cave. So, so this is sort of, and this is miles away from Pavilion Cave. When I say miles away, um, it's it's a good five miles away from Pavilion Cave. So so this again's got similar evidence to Pavilion Cave, but it, it's 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 in a different area. Um, and one thing one thing that we do find which is unusual is that there's bones within this cave that have that have been worked. So when we're talking about the hyena's den and all the paraphernalia associated with the hyena's den 
there's also evidence that human beings have also lived there as well or, or, or done some work in there. And there's bones with cut marks on them, which unfortunately, I don't know where they are. And, and the, these bones with cut marks on them could be as important as, as the ochre bone that was found at Creswell Crags and from the same date. I don't know. I don't have that evidence. And there's evidence of um, reindeer antlers as well within this sort of cave network. Now, what we do find as well is, is that within one of the cave, with, within um, the east chamber, the same chamber that we get these human jaw bones and, 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 and associated with the hyena's den and all the rest of it, all that, right? They, they found the remains of uh, what they believe to be a woman and the jaw of a child. Um, now, what does all this mean? We don't really know. Was this evidence of human occupation or was this evidence of the bones have been buried there? Or was this evidence that, uh, that human remains have been dragged there? Or was this evidence that the, the, the bones associated with the hyena uh, were butchered by human beings? We don't know. It's really, really complicated. And we don't have... The evidence to actually tell us any more because this stuff well we also find within this cave as well this cave network is roman evidence uh, a mortarium a mortarium is associated with burial cremation evidence from about the 300 years ad so another cave with roman evidence in it which is which is rather rather interesting there um number 11 as well on the map it is north hill tor cave um note the word tor Tor is associated with Glastonbury Tor, a big, a big carboniferous limestone thing that sticks out. Again, more clue to this richer carboniferous landscape that has now eroded away into the sea. So Norfield Tor. Now, this is a site that's, um, that the archaeological evidence was destroyed by a quarry. In. But before the cave was destroyed by a quarry in 1869, um, they again found more evidence associated with a rock fissure. Now, lot, some of this evidence, not all of it, but let's say a good proportion of it seems to be in these rock fissures. Now, we can think that the rock fissures are all that's left of the cave network because the rest have collapsed and eroded over the past 10,000, 12, 13, 14, 15,000 years ago or whatever. Um, but within this cave, they did actually find some more Pleistocene evidence pre-melting of the ice. Um, uh, Paleolithic evidence, Pleistocene, that, remember that's a geological period name for the Paleolithic period. Our period again is geologically the Holstocene period and Mesolithic, Neolithic, uh, uh, Bronze Age is on. So within this one, number 11, a finding again, unworked flakes, there's some stuff going on, scrapers, um, and again, evidence from the upper Paleolithic period, again, very far away from Pavlan, no link but maybe similar activity. But again, we lost that evidence in 1869. So what I'd like to do now, I'd like to look at, oh, we've done that one, there we go. Mitchin, Mitchin hole, Mitchin hole, this, this is a good one. We don't do dogger's hole today and we don't do cat hole cave, um, but we'll leave the dog in for another day. So Mitchin hole, so Mitchin hole itself is um, number 12. Right, so we've, we've gone to the other side of the gower now. Number 12, there, there. Uh, we're, we're more towards Oystermouth, Oystermouth Bay. We're towards, we're near Catole Cave, number 17. Yep, yeah, and number 16, which we will look at, which is Tuthole Cave. Number 12, there you go, along the coast as well. But it, again, we haven't mentioned this at all, really. I, I did when we looked at Pavlan. This would have been this would have been 70 miles away from the coast uh, 12,000 years ago. Yeah. So this is a spacious cave. This is actually 50 meters into the rock. That is. Um, yeah. No, nope, not that. That, that. That's 50 meters into the rock. Looking out 50 meters into the rock. This is this is rather very, very interesting for us. This is a very spacious cave. If you would like to, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do, um, we'll describe this as if we're, we're letting it out to um, 70, 12,000 years ago. It's a rather spacious cave with, with a 10 meter high entranceway. So you can get your mammoth in there. Uh, it's 10 meters wide, uh, maybe 
wide enough to uh, park your mammoth at the entrance. Um, it goes 50 metres into the rock, so it's rather, rather spacious. And then it opens up into um, a chamber, which which has got a, a, a maximum width of 20 metres. It, it's very spacious. You can bury people in there. You can live in the air. You can have cave art and you can keep your hyenas at the back as well. Wonderful. But there's a bit of a problem. It slopes. So it slopes, it slopes steeply from, from the, the mouth into the cave. So it's not as luxurious, and, uh, but it's a very deep cave. Um, and there are various deposits in there um, that because of the nature of the gradient, uh, when people have been excavating, obviously they, they you know, it, it, it's caused great disturbance and damage. The cave was explored in 1850, um, and only faunal remains were found. Only faunal remains were found in 1850, um, a mammalia in, in 1932. However, on the surface, as people would wander in here, in 1896 and 1946, guess what they should find? Let's go out into the woods today, Iron Age Part 3. And they also found Roman pottery and some Roman Samian from France. So Roman Samian were in this cave. You don't, this is the point. And, and before any of you make the point, you don't really associate Roman occupation with caves at all, at all. But we've got this on the Gower. Dating to around 100 years AD. We've got hearths and domestic refuge. Why are there hearths and domestic refuges in these caves at Gower? So excavation is 1946. What we do find is that the excavation in 1946 told us that people were actually living in the caves, occupied by native peoples during the first centuries of um, the Age of Christ. So for the first 500 years from zero to about 450 odd people are living within these caves. They're actually living, there's hearths in there. Are they living? What are the fires about? And then you go into this post Roman period and they find brooches, annular brooches, and silver coins, coins, plural, three silver coins are actually found dating to the 900s. What is going on here, folks? Something very interesting with caves on the Gower. Very, very interesting. So we're coming slowly towards the end now, looking out of this cave. Again, this looks out of, across a landscape today, which is now sea, but back in the day it wasn't. And, it, and, it, and the sea didn't really approach for another, after 12,000 years ago, the sea wasn't really approaching and visible for another 2,000 years or more, you know? So yeah, you go. And even 6,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, the sea was still a bit further out, you know? So the sea wasn't lapping near the coast. So what, what we're going to do now, and I'm, I'm re really wearing myself out now, we're, we're, we're look, going to look at number 13. Number 13, we've got 13, 14, 15, and 16, and then that's it. Number 15 is known as Bacon's Eye, right? And we, I, I, um, I'm just going to double check on something a minute. Um, well, this is Bacon's Hole. Let's look at Bacon's Eye in it. So we've got number 13 and 14, right? Bacon's Eye, not Bacon's Hole, um, is another double cave, right? Um, and it extends um, inwards um, into, the, into the cliff for over nine metres. And it's seven metres above the water level, which is, which is okay. Um, and what we do think is that what we do think is that over time, the archaeological, the archaeology has washed out of the cave um, onto the um, underlying strata below. below. Um, and the, the, the levels of archaeology are incredible, metres and metres thick of archaeology buildup, which which by all accounts hasn't really been thoroughly excavated. But what we do find is that what we do find is that archaeological excavations in the 1850s revealed not one but 1,000 shed deer antlers. 
right, shed deer antlers, antlers have been shed. Now, now, does this mean that this was like a meeting point, popular meeting point, the deers, right? So you can imagine that, you know, it, 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 there's a deer wandering down the road and they say, oh, let's go to the deer meeting place, right? It's likely that uh, it, it's very likely that deers may have actually met here um, as a place to congregate. A thousand deer antlers have been found. Wonderful piece of evidence from the 1850s, again excavated by wood. Lots of these artifacts are um, to be found uh, in the in the museum in Swansea, the Royal Institute of South Wales Museum in Swansea. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at number 14. Um, and then we're going to quickly go on to Kittle Cave, which is a little bit further up towards that boundary there, Kittle Cave. Probably come back to the map. Let's look at Bacon Hole. And there is Bacon Hole. There's Bacon Hole, as it is, um, into, and you look out of Bacon Hole. It's absolutely fascinating, doesn't it? What, 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 what that could, would have been like in the past. Bacon Hole is about nine metres above high water level. Nice. Um, it is 18 meters wide. Wow. Wow. Now, this is the type of cave people may have lived in. Six meters high, definitely. Um, and penetrating, and it goes into the rock for 36 meters, obviously going much deeper into the rock back in the day. Um, there's a little branch, there's a little sort of um, little, little tunnel that leads off it um, for six meters. Great. Love it. Uh, the cave was carefully explored in 1850. I like the word carefully by Colonel Wood. I like the word careful. As, uh, now, this is interesting. He recorded la layers, layers, because he probably had the room to do it, of Pleistocene deposits pre-12,000 years ago, followed by natural earth layers. Um, what we do have is antlers being found one antler in, in fact being found which bore distinct marks of having been wrought by human hands nice that's from wood's own words finds of pottery at that time in a superficial mud can be considered with later casual finds so there's a mixture of evidence again weird <laughs> I mean, this, no, this is nowhere near the sea so why is the why is the archaeology all mixed up and churned around Glacial glacial melting of the ice, maybe something like that. Uh, if it's obviously <laughs> pre-melting of the ice 12,000 years ago. Um, Iron Age bowl found in your decorated Iron Age bowl and an Irish uh, style brooch uh, dating from the 600s and beads beads from over a border. Saxon beads from around the same date, the 600s. Um, so it's general, and, and there was one other strange thing on, on the. Can you actually see that? There, there's if you can actually. Oh, hang on, low me. Hang on. Can you can you b briefly see? Can you see the word cave? And and, and above there's red marks in, markings on the top of the cave. Can you see that? You got that, guys. Can you see the red? Yeah, yeah. There's cave art in this cave. Yeah, no. Discovered in 1912. It, yeah, is there cave art? This is a thing. There's red streaks on the cave wall, and it was hailed in 1912, mind you, at the same time as uh, Piltdown Man Forgery, <coughs> as the first instance of um, parental art in Britain, basically art on rock. Um, now, there's a problem. They, they think it might be a natural phenomenon, or it might be, uh, recent or artificial, but nobody's actually examined it. And I think that's strange. I think that's very strange. And and maybe that would be interesting if it is cave art. Very well, actually, it would it would be the first colour used in a cave on any art in Britain that we've discovered. That's worth investigating. And maybe if you wanted to have a little look at that in the week, Henry, I'd be delighted to know if we can see more about that. Um, yeah, I there's think... an article in the Guardian. Um, Give it to us. Read it out for us. Go on. Let, uh, don't... Quite, it's, it's a really long article, and I've only just started to scan it. So, um... I tell you what, Henry. Give us a choice bit of information. We'll use it next week. Okay. Okay. I'll have, I'll have a little read of it because there's a, quite a bit in it. 
Well, I haven't mentioned what we're doing next week. We're do, going to do Goff's Cave next week. So um, that, 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 that's an English cave we'll be looking at. So last thing last thing we're going to look at now is Tuthold Cave. A bit of investigation with Tuthold gets your mind working, right? Well, just mention we've got <coughs> Kittle Cave there, uh, number 15. Uh, this is 50 metres above sea level. These these are inland now. Uh, the the, the Tuthole is inland. Cathole, which we're not doing today. We're doing that one again. And we're going to do number 15. So this is Kittle Hill Cave. This itself, 50 metres above sea level. Um, and unfortunately, this was completely destroyed in, in 1926 with road construction. There were three individual caves. Um along where they were placing the road into. And it makes sense if you're going to put a road in, um, you're going to put it into a ledge, which may have had activity from the past. So that, that sort of, this is why it was lost. Um, one of the caves was was nearly four metres wide. Um, and, 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 and the chamber itself, uh, six metres long, um, really high, nearly five metres in height. In that, they found a mammalia fauna, um, of quite a clean date, so that's um, and more recent stuff as well. And there were quantities of charcoal found in the cave, indicating human occupation, but no other artifacts were recovered. Now, we're going to think about that evidence in regards to charcoal in the cave. That charcoal may have actually been a natural phenomenon, as we see with some cave evidence in the likes of. Aboriginal uh, Australia, but that's up for debate. We don't have any more evidence gone forever. Um, we're going to look at number 16 on there. It's known as Tuthole Cave. This one gets you thinking. Um, and then that will be enough, enough for today. So Tuthole Cave itself, that is again 50 metres above Ordnance Datum. You've got to pass Cattle Cave. Um, this is further up the valley. Tuthole Cave itself is, is rather interesting. It's only four metres away from the valley floor, right? But the valley floor has risen um, of 46 metres above sea level. So it's 40 metres above the valley floor, but the cave itself is 50 metres above sea level. Now, it, it, there, there's a passageway which five metres goes into the rock, um, and it's a very interesting passageway. Let's have a look what it looks like. There it is. There's the entrance, and there it is. I tell you what, that, that is masterfully odd. That's definitely a hole. That's the type of thing that I. Um, that's that's the type of thing you might see at Dana Rogoff. I've, I've been in the Dana Rogoff cave systems twice in my life. Never again. Um, it, it's like the deaf lead and the blind in those cave networks. Go down this really tight hole. Yeah, right. Anyway, so this is rather interesting. Five metres long, two metres high in part, right? This is quite narrow there. Oh, no, that again. 1.4 metres high, that's why it's there, and two metres wide. So two metres wide, 1.4 metres high, and it's a over five metre long passageway. Sorry for that little mistake I just made. Um now, interesting enough, this wasn't discovered in, until 1961. Now, at the entranceway was this glacial boulder blocking it. Um, so they had to remove the glacial boulder, which then remove, which then revealed a long passageway into an undiscovered cave system. There's a cave system beyond. There's more of it. This reached that chamber. And the chamber itself, so you go down there, reaching a chamber, after 5.2 meters, and now the removed glacial stone. Um, and it's um, and basically the chamber itself uh, measures 10 meters by six meters, um, with an overall height of nine meters. Now, rather interesting, this listen to this. They excavated the deepest part of the chamber, finding flint and bone tools. Love it. Human remains on top. Rubble filling, love it. Brown soil as well. Evidence of charcoal, animal bones, love it. <coughs> um, but there was, you got charcoal, 
but there was no evidence that fire had been kindled in the cave. So there was no scoring or the charcoal had seemed to be moved into the cave, right? Further discoveries included pottery. Hang on. Pottery, pottery. We don't really see pottery in Britain until about 8,000 years ago at the most. This glacial blocking would have occurred 12,000 years ago. So, oh God, I'm a bit confused now. I've really stuffed up this, haven't I? But there's an answer. Uh, they, they then found that there was another passageway leading into this passage. And that was the answer. The glacial blocking had always been there. But people in the past had found another way into the cave system. And what they then found was needles and bones and polished flint and scrapers and all this evidence dating from way beyond time and into the Bronze Age. The Bronze Age over 4,000 years ago. And there's evidence that people were going into this cave system and the evidence that they find the flints and all the rest of it indicated that there was people working leather within this cave system 4,000 years ago. Lots of flint flakes, scrapers, the type of scrapers that we use for scraping. Scrapers for scraping, yes, that's what we call scrapers. And then what they then found, now this is really, this, 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 you know, if I'd done this at the beginning, I'm glad I didn't because this is the players de resistance at the end. Human <coughs> remains, there were human remains of eight individuals within this cave system. Males, four males, females, three females, and a girl, young girl, eight altogether. Fragmentary and disarticulated and incomplete. Burials, incomplete cave network, nobody can get into. What the hell's going on here? Um, one skull had been carefully um, placed together. So in other words, <coughs> after the skull had decomposed, it looked somehow broken, and then somebody gathered it all together and, and what? Um, it, it's, it's in disarray, right? We don't know why. We don't know why people are working in there in the Bronze Age with leather, with all those tools. Um, and it's a very intriguing, interesting cave that we can only think that the story of the caves on the Gower are more complicated than I've even mentioned today. You've got a cave here in closing. You've got a cave here that's got a glacial block in. They found another way into it. Uh, you've got chamber. Um, you, you've got indications of burials, bones, which are disarticulated. You've got a Bronze Age activity. You've got uh, earlier activity. You've got animal remains. You've got all this stuff, really complicated stuff. And on that note, we're going to call it a day. Um, we will look at Cattle Cave again. Um, and I don't know if anyone's got any questions. They want me to keep the map on for a moment. Um, uh, um, Henry, have you got any questions this week? No, I found that really interesting, actually. I think, um, as I say, I'm quite intrigued about caves actually under the sea uh, level because uh, that, that could be interesting if that was ever found or explored. Um, and, and, yeah, go on. Unfortunately, the painting one, I've got to the end of the article and they've confirmed that it's, um, it's a red oxide that's come through the rock. Rather interesting, that isn't it? So, if we think about red oxide and we think about red ochre, there's not too much of a difference. Mm. Very interesting, very interesting. So, um, th th there's some there's some notes that you've put up here as well. Um, look at caveburial.ubss.org.uk. Yes, that's where I got some of the images from. Yes, um, there's also a caving team in the 1970s found bones in Kutch Cave. Uh, took them to the Glamorna Grant Archaeological Trust. They were they were told uh, bones of no interest, and they binned them. <laughs> that wasn't the cave who binned them. It was the uh, archaeological society binned them. Uh, the archaeological trust. Yeah, I, I've, I've uh, yeah found a newsletter number ninety eight from South Wales Ca Caving Club. 
Um, see pages 22, 26 bones. Got to end of article. This is the one about... Um, um, do you know, didn't we actually... Did, did we not do Kutch Cave? Uh, I'm just going to double check. Um, we... we, we we, we um yeah we did do Kutch Cave and I didn't do much with it did I but um but back back to our back to, no Bacon Hole yeah Bacon Hole so we're, we're talking about Bacon Hole this is where the red streaks are of red oxide mineral seeping through the rock and not prehistoric art but I tell you what though not being art it may have seemed to them that it was art anyway That's you see did did that. You know that 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 it that might be the reason why they're there because of the the the, the redness on there. You know, it's it, it's it's all all brilliant stuff. So, um, Henry, anything else you want to say before we ask off? I think the uh, the Kutch Cave one, that article of the cavers, they did go back and do more work, and I, I've picked up that they found possibly a bison bone, um, <laughs> which they sent to the British Museum. But uh, uh, again, I think they got a bit of a, a, a nil reply. Oh God, it's not this. This is the problem with some archaeologists. We, yeah, we just yeah, it's like oh, we, we'll yeah, I know, I I I've, I I I've yeah, I, I've seen that a number of times. Uh, Goff, anything you'd like to say? Oh, it's very interesting. It's uh, it's very evocative to think of um, all these people wandering into these caves over the millennium. Dropping their bits and pieces everywhere. It's good, good stuff. And the other, actually, do you know what? You made a very important point at the end there, right? Dropping their bits and pieces. Well, that, that's a very good point. We find these things and we think they're of innate significance, but they may have just been dropped. But then the moment, then the then the artifact is actually evidence that they were there. So going from the complete mundane they've lost they've lost it then we dismiss it and then we bring it back on board and say actually no that's not dismissed it's, it's actually our, our code's good evidence it proves that they were there so it's the whole story we, 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 <coughs> we, yeah. it's the whole story and you are very very right in what you've just said yeah. good so what, what we're going to do we're going to do goff's cave next week which will be a lot more easier to to get our grip around um if there's no more questions from Henri and Goff this week, I, I really enjoyed that this week. It's been a really great recording. That's really worked well. If there's nothing else, I, I'm going to say that um, if any of you guys are interested in our trip to West Wales in um, um, in uh, October, let me know. But um, if not, if there's no other questions, and we'll be, and I, I don't know, Henry, but if you wanted to join us for that date in, in June, and I don't know when it is, um, I'll let you know when that is, okay? All right, you send us the dates. I'm actually in Cyprus in June and in Canada in October. All right, then we'll, we'll, we'll forget those then. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, bye. anyway, uh, stay there a minute, Henry. Uh, bye bye, Goff. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. Bye bye, Goff. Bye bye. 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 See, you soon. see you soon. Okay, which part of Cyprus are you going to? It's the east uh, coast. Um, Ah, you, uh, um, I'd have you, to look it up. Um, you're going to um, um, Paphos or... Um, oh, no, God. It, we're going into Larnaca and then going e uh, east. Oh, right. Hang on. I've got to get my island right. Yeah. Um, hang on. Let me get my island right. Yeah. East is... is Yeah. So Farm Augusta. You're going to Farm Augusta, Ayanapa. Yeah, above there, above I and Apple, um, uh, we, uh, I'd have to look it up. Um, th there's Famagusta, uh, I and Apple, um, and not Imdumu. Uh, Azuri or something. Oh, Azuri. No, no, no. You got no Azuri's on the west coast. Um, no, it's definitely east, and it's because we're. Hang, hang on, hang on. I, I need to correct myself there. Hang on a minute. Let's just let's just have a quick look a minute. Um, um, Hold on. I've got Hold on. I'll be back in a second. Oh. No, Pizuri's near Limassol. It's on the it's near Paphos. Where's the map? 
<laughs> no, Pizuri's near Pizuri is near Limassol. It's near Paphos. I I know Pizuri because I got a bank account there. <laughs> yeah, I do actually. Ultraeus. And that's on the east coast, is it? Yeah. How do you how do you spell that? P R O T A R A S. Ah, Pataras. Yeah. Ah, right. So that that's oh nice. Oh, that's by the coast. That'll be nice. That'll be nice. Oh, okay then. Well, it's going to be bloody hot that uh, time. Got to be honest with you. Yeah, uh, been recommended though to go across the border and go because there's uh, some interesting places actually just over the border. Yes, um, obviously Farm Augusta, yeah. Yeah. And, and um, oh God, I keep forgetting the bloody, um, I keep forgetting the name of the site there. Oh. Ah, uh, it'll come to me. Anyway, um, okay, we'll call it a day now and, uh, and we'll, we'll chat about Cyprus again. Okay, and if you sent you, the thing you were talking about in June, what exactly? I missed that bit. Uh, yeah, basically, what it is, what it is, I'm, I'm, um, uh, Jessica's going away for for two weeks, and I thought, well, I don't want people in Landsberg Major to be going online for two weeks, um, so I'll I'll go to Landsberg Major and do it live, but I, I don't want to go on a, I don't want to be in a stuffy room or anything. I may, may as well. Tell people in advance to get chairs and stuff, fold up chair, and we'll, we'll just do it outside. I, I've got, I've got the, I've got the, um, um, I've, I've got the ability to um, set up uh, a projector outside and project on that wall of, of, of the dove coat. So it should be quite interesting. Mind you, it's going to be quite difficult to get contrast on the dove coat in in the daytime, but I'm sure, I'm sure. I'll, I'm sure I'll, <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure it works somewhere. You'll think of something. <laughs> e e even if it's an absolute disaster, it's better to have tried and not to have tried at all. That, that is true. Right. Okay. I'll let, then. You, get, I'll let <laughs> you get on because your turkey probably needs feeding again. Uh, yeah, he, he had his orange earlier on. He, he, he's got to have his vitamin C every day because he because he'll fall ill again. And I tell you what, you get an ill turkey, it's not a good sight. Anyway, have a good week. Have a good week. I'll see, I'll see you on uh, Thursday next week. Take care. Will do. Bye-bye. Take care, Henry. Bye. Bye-bye. 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 That was a good one. The recording was A1. A1. It was absolutely perfect. A1 recording. And I, I don't know why, what has changed. So what we're going to do, we're going to... I'm going to look at um, the messages again. Don't forget to like and subscribe, everybody. Just the messages. In, just the messages. Someone has put a video up called Gower Caves, not the Gower. Oh, basically, Gower is called Gower, not the Gower. That's the point. There seems to be fines in the 1960s, but I can't get to file. That's typical. Don't use Arquilio, Glamong, the Grant Archaeological Trust site. Absolutely rubbish. Um, would the cave have been a lot larger original to do iron work, but with erosion, there is less cave now? Yeah, possibly. Possibly there might be another process that we don't know about. Do we have any underwater sea cave systems off this coast? Definitely. We don't talk about them. Definitely. Uh, look at caveburial.ubss.org.uk. Uh, yes, love it. Um, here we go. A caving team in the 1970s found bones in Kutch Cave, took them to Glamorgan Grant Archaeological Trust in Swansea. Uh, they were told bones of no interest and they binned them. Found a newsletter number 98 from South Wales, Caving Club, C pages 22, 28, both. And do you know what? This is why people don't use archaeologists sometimes because they got no regard for people's finding things. My why bother taking them to the archaeologist in the first place if you're going to bin them? Um, at least give them back and give them some explanation, at least, if nothing. Got to end of article, um, the one about the red oxide in Bacon Old Cave. Um, outcome 
got to the end of the article, outcome is the red streaks, uh, red oxide, mineral seeping through the rock and not prehistoric art. Love it. It's in Guardian, article 16, 10, 2018. We're going to finish with that now, chat. Don't forget to like, subscribe and join. Love you lots for watching. Thank you very much. Bye.